Hi, my name is James Gwertzman. I'm the CEO of PlayFab. And today I'm going to give you a demo of PlayFab's core systems and the tool we call the Game Manager, which is the tool that your game operations team would use to operate your game once it goes live. In this example, uh, I've already I've logged into the Game Manager, and what I'm seeing here are two different games that I've already set up in the Game Manager. One's a mobile demo, one's a, a sample game called Unicorn Battle. So let's go ahead and click on uh, mobile demo. And the first thing we see here is a dashboard showing some key stats for the game. Uh, because this game is still in dev mode, this game is limited to 1,000 daily active users and it's limited to 100,000 APIs. Once your game enters live mode, these limits go away and you, are, you have unlimited DAUs and unlimited APIs. Uh, but at that point, you have to have picked one of the, the, the tiers to uh, operate in. So for now, this game is in dev mode. Let's go ahead and talk through some of the key features of the game manager. So the first thing is we have this alert window up here. Anytime we have updates or need to share information with our developers, we publish alerts here in the, uh, in, in the game manager. So you'll see information uh, up there. Second thing to show you is the settings tab. This is where you go in to set uh, properties and information for your game. So we have uh, credentials. Every game has a set of credentials. Uh, every game has a unique ID, and that is what is used to uh, identify your game when calling all of our various API calls and in the SDK. For example, if you install the Unity SDK for PlayFab, uh, one of the first questions it will ask you for your game is what's the game title ID of your game. Likewise, uh, every game gets its own custom API endpoint. If and when you are calling any of our APIs, uh, this is the URL that you'll be using for those APIs. So for example, if I were to go to our website and go into our documentation section, so I'm going to go to our website, go to our documentation section, uh, and go to, for example, APIs, and pick an, any API, like, for example, I don't know, let's go ahead and look at uh, something like Get Leaderboard API. You'll see that uh, it expects you to post the uh, request to uh, a particular URL. And basically, the URL you're, you're posting to is the URL specified here in this API endpoint. But again, if you're using one of our SDKs, this is all taken care of for you. And finally, the secret key here is used for uh, communicating with PlayFab servers from your own server, so server-to-server -server communication. Uh, and that's really only relevant if you're doing a multiplayer game or a web server or some other server communications. General information, so we set things like the name of the game, upload the logo for your game. We limit intentionally what the client API is allowed to do. We basically don't, cr don't trust game clients to do certain things. So this is also where you can go in and, and override some of those client uh, API limitations. We have uh, one of the things that, that's, that's really important about PlayFab is, is what we call uh, title data or, or key, key value pair storage. So PlayFab stores a lot of custom information about your game. Uh, one of the most important things we store for your game is what we call title data. Title data is a set of key value pairs that are used to configure your game itself. And these are all configurations that allow you to change the behavior of your game after your game goes live. So you can use title data to, for example, add new levels, add new missions, uh, ch uh, uh, change achievement levels, uh, change the difficulty of your game, all after your game is already live. And that's really important because one of the whole points about having a live game operation strategy is the ability to update and continually updating your game without having to rebuild the game content and resubmit to Apple and go through the whole certification process and so on. So this is important. In this example here, I've just got a handful of, of, of these basic key value pairs. But you can add new key value pairs anytime you want to. Uh, and then your game client, when your game first runs, one of the first things your game can do uh, is download all that title data. So for example, if you look in our, in our documentation here, you'll see right here, uh, get title data. This is the API call you would call to download and retrieve uh, all the, the properties set on your game here in this uh, game title data. Secret keys is where you would go if you're going to set uh, unique keys for say Facebook or Steam or Apple or Google. That we, we use that information ourselves to validate, for example, receipts, get buddy lists, and so forth. Uh, user permissions, we have a pretty robust permissions model. So if you're going to have an operations team using this tool to operate your game, you're going to want to make sure that, uh, for example, your customer service person has permissions to edit a player profile, but does not have permissions to, say, change item prices. Or you want to make sure, for example, that your game designer has permission to change 
properties of items in your catalog, but not stop and start your servers, for example. So the permissions model here is where you'd go to set those different permissions. Um, each user who has access to your tool uh, can have a different set of permissions. We also have an audit history. So anytime anyone ever changes anything uh, about the game uh, in the game manager, uh, it gets logged. And you can go in later on and see who changed what and why, uh, which, is, which is often very helpful, especially if something changes in your game, like some item price gets changed the wrong value, and you want to find out who, who, who did that. Okay, so that's, that gives you a brief overview of the settings tab.